Hey there teachers. So I have a website that I want to show you. I have used this website for years and it was not until this past March when merging into distance learning that I realized this website had all of these features and functions at the bottom. I pretty much lived at the top and um, used it, but I, it was so exciting for me. And especially because I was teaching from a computer, it made it that much better. So whether you're teaching in person and you have a smart board or you have a computer for small group that you're going to be using, or whether you are teaching online, which means that you have this website right there at your fingertips, I want to show you some features that I discovered in March and it completely changed the game with working with my students. So I'm going to show you this website. I'm going to show you a couple of the features and functions and then encourage you to go play around and use it with your students too. So here we go. So for the longest time, I have used this website, onlinestopwatch.com, and what pops up first is their standard stopwatch and countdown, which I use the countdown all the time. I put in the time that the students have to complete an activity or the time we have until they transition, and I click it. And then big on the screen, it just counts down the time, and then it will signal when the time is up for the students, and it's it's they can be able to hear it. So in March, when I was on this website, it paused and I was trying to move the mouse back and forth. And when I did, it went to the bottom. And that is when I saw that they had classroom timers, holiday timers, random name pickers, random number generators, sensory timers, um, exam timers, presentation timers, the group generators, and all of these other different types of clocks um, that you can be able to use in your classroom or in this case online. So of course I got so excited because to keep my students engaged, I wanted them to be able to um, watch the screen. And so I typically use the classroom timers, the random name pickers, the random number generators, and I also used the sensory timers when giving them a couple of minutes to complete something. And so I'm going to show you what each of those um, look like. When you click on it, a lot of other options pop up. It, it's 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 really exciting because you can essentially do something different every single day and just rotate it. Um, but if you do like one in particular, then you can just stick with that one. So I'm going to show you a couple of the ones that my students really loved. But again, whenever you click on these, like random name picker, then it's going to give you a lot of options. So some of the options that you can have are to do spinners, cubes, or any of these options too. You can put it in a cog machine, a magic box, a magic hat, a jack in the box, and it's all animated. Some of them have sounds and the kids love it. It also can pick names for you at random or you can set the names, but there's just so many different types of, of animations and different things that you can do. So don't let the ads fool you. Whenever you move this into full screen, you don't see the ads at all. And so it's just going to be there for whenever you are ready to, to pick it. So now I'm going to show you um, a couple of my favorites. So this one is the um, random name generator, the magic hat. And so what you'll do to get started is you'll click the little settings button on any of these um, different generators. And you'll be able to have the option to type your students' names in here, or you can do numbers from one to a certain number um, if your students are labeled by number, or if you wanna do something for math, you can do a generator by number. Um, but for the names, what I found was helpful is in a Word document, I would have all of my students' names listed. So I would write one name, press enter, another name, press enter, another name, press enter. Then you can copy and paste that entire list here. Um, for the purpose of this, I'm just going to use their names that they've generated. But just like that, you can paste it in there and then they're ready to go. So then when you click set, it is um, here for you. Again, if you don't want these things here, you will click super full screen and it'll take the whole entire screen for you. Um, so I'm gonna, you'll click it here and then it'll pull out Ava. And so Ava will be able to answer the question, share her thoughts or do the problem. 
And if you don't want Ava called again before every child is called, then you can click remove and that'll take her name away from the hat until someone else, um, until everyone has been called. So then you can just click it again and then Olivia gets a turn. So this was a really great interactive way. When you click full screen there, um, it will show it to you nice and big and then you don't see those ads anymore. So just make sure that you click full screen um, as much as you can and you won't be able to see all the ads at the top. So this one is super fun if you are again wanting to call on a couple of students to um, read something or answer a question. And this is the random name picker wheel. So again, here you'll see all of their generated names. You would replace these names with your students. And down here is where you can use the Wheel of Fortune screen, um, full screen, and that will get rid of all of the ads. So again, to add your students' names, you'll click on the settings button and then right here, is where you will populate the names again. The same thing you can do for numbers. So if you wanted to do an activity where you wanted it to pick a number, you would change it to what you want and click set. So I used it a lot for the names. And so when you click set and then you go into the full screen, you will then have the option over here to do this super full screen as well, which will take away this top ad. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And then there it is. Your students will never see the ads at the top. So when you're ready, you'll click the middle spin. And then it is going to spin a name of one of your students. And it says Jacob is the winner to answer this one. And so he can answer the question. If you do not want Jacob to have another turn before everybody else, you'll click remove. And then you can be able to spin it again. And now you'll see that Jacob is gone and another child will be able to answer. So now it's Sophia's turn and then so forth. So you can just continue with the spinner and um, the kids love being able to see whose name is getting chosen on this one. So let me show you a couple of others. This is the balloon group generator. And so for this one, when you click the little setting key, you will be able to enter all of your names of your students. Then you can actually save or update names or uh, in this in some of these. And so in this group generator, you can actually have the option to save the names in there. So then you're going to go over here and say, how many groups do you want? Maybe you want four groups and it'll tell you you're going to have one group of six, three groups of five. Um, you can be able to have as many groups as you would like, or you can click maximum group size and it will tell you um, the maximum amount of groups that you can have. One group of five, four groups of four. So this is a, a random generator. So when you click on make groups, the balloon will pop and it'll say, okay, group number one, Harper, Mason, Emma, Noah, you're going to be working on this. Then you'll go to next. And then group number two, Olivia, Abby, William, Ava, and so forth. So it's really exciting for the kids to be able to see who they are grouping with. And it's completely random. And um, it's just a lot of fun for the kids. And so when I did want them to do breakout groups or small groups um, where, where ability really did not matter, this was definitely what I used to make groups, and it was just so much fun. Again, there are a lot of different group generators. So when you click the group generators, you are going to see several, let me see if I can pull it up. You're going to see several of these different generators that you can do. There's the magic hat again. Um, I loved using the curtain group generator, um, but they're just so much fun. And the kids can be able to really stay engaged with you and you can have a lot of fun with it too. Okay, so if I go again, you have to kind of scroll to the bottom, which is how I missed all of these before. But if you scroll to the very bottom, um, there's this one called sensory timers. Now, when you click on sensory timers, this one was really, really cool because it has calming, soothing music at the end. So you can choose from these different sensory types of rings or gauges or bars or all of this stuff, you all. Um, but I usually use some of these up here the most. And so let's say that you click the bubble timer. 
So this is the screen for the sensory bubble liquid timer and it will uh, have some minutes or seconds already pre-generated or you can be able to create your own with this button right here. So um, again, you can be able to view this in full screen to get rid of these ads or even super full screen and now you see no ads and your students won't see them either. So for the purpose of this, I'm going to just put 10 seconds on the timer and then you're going to click start down here you have other options of how you want the time to show or the sound um, but the sound when it timed when the timer is up it's very calming for any of these sensory ones so when you're clicking it and the kids are working this would go way slower with more time and it fills to the bottom and when time is up it signals to students in a very calming way with this calm music for the transition to happen or for the activity to be over and um, things like that. So I really love this. And if kids are looking at it, it's just watching all of the sensory motions happening is really calming for students to see. So this was one of the kids' favorites. And you saw that they have a lot of different sensory ones that you can be able to do. So this is the website that I wanted to share with you today, online-stopwatch.com. It is right here for you. And again, I just kind of used this one until more recently. I do remember using a bomb countdown before, which is why I feel like these I've never seen before because I know I would have seen it. But um, it seems like they are updating and adding different types of interactive elements to this website, which is really, really awesome. And so if you are teaching online, this is a great way for you to be able to connect with your students, keep them engaged, keep them um, just in tune with what's going on by way of using the timers or even the name or number generators. If you are teaching face-to-face, this is still really awesome to use if you have a smart board or if you are um, at your small group area, you can be able to use an iPad, a Chromebook, or anything like that that's on a smaller scale. All you really need is the internet. And so I would highly encourage you to check out um, this website, play around with all of these different elements that they have, and just watch the engagement and your students' just excitement increase in spark. It's going to be so great. Um, I hope you enjoyed this teacher tech tip and go try it out.